Well, food costs have continued to rise and produce quality is down. What are you gonna do about it? Grow your own food. Don't know how? I'm gonna tell you in this video. If you're a brand new gardener, it can be a little overwhelming when you first start, so I'm gonna share with you all my best tips. And I'm gonna dive right in with number one, which is start small. It can be really tempting at first to just get all of the things and just plant everything all at once. Don't do that. Just plant the things that you know your family loves and will eat so that at harvest time, you're not dealing with a ridiculous amount of produce. Well, you know what they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So make sure that you have a plan for your garden and where you're gonna put it and kind of how everything's gonna be laid out. And the most important thing when you're considering where to put your garden bed is how much sunlight does it get? Because if you don't get enough sunlight, then your garden's not gonna grow. And so this is my handy dandy diagram from last year. And this was where I drew out where everything was gonna go. And you can tell I am definitely an artist, oh yes. It's really important that you choose the right plants. So you wanna grow things that grow really well in your climate and in your soil. So do your research and figure out what varieties grow well where you are. And the other thing that's important is you wanna make sure you're choosing quality seeds because not all seeds are created equal. So I highly recommend heirloom seeds or open pollinated seeds that are proven to have a high germination rate and are actually going to yield you a harvest. And here in Tennessee, for example, things like lettuce grow well, but only until like mid June and then it starts to get too hot and it just gets really scraggly and bitter. So lettuce is a good option, but only at certain times of the year, whereas we have a longer growing season. So we can have a fall garden, which maybe isn't a possibility for you. If you're not sure what to plant when, a lot of times on the back of the seed packets, it'll give you some guidelines, but it helps to know what zone you're in too. So I'm gonna show you here, this map above is the zone map, and that tells you kind of based on where you are, what zone you're in and when to plant. And I'm gonna link that down below so you can reference this later. I would definitely choose things that are easy to grow. Things like greens, like spinach, kale, lettuce, um, zucchini is easy to grow. Green beans are pretty easy as well. And let me show you, I actually have some spinach that I planted in the fall. This was our second, um, our fall garden, and it's still growing and it is now February. And we've had heavy frost and it's been really, really crispy and it has still survived and it's still growing. So let me show you. I wanted to show you how easy this is to grow. So this is spinach all right here. This is spinach in our very overgrown garden bed. It's February, I planted these in November and we did get a couple harvests out of them and then we got some really hard frost and I kept trying to cover it during the frost and they just weren't doing well. So I gave up, but guess what? They didn't. And so as you can see, I mean, we're gonna get lots more spinach here. That's how easy the greens are to grow. They're really hardy ones. You can even grow them in the cold weather. We've got some kale here that's volunteering too. I did plant this in November as well. There's nothing worse than going to do a job and realizing you don't have the right tools. So before you start planting anything, make sure you get yourself the proper tools. And the first thing I'm gonna recommend are some good garden gloves. I got these at the local home improvement store, but I really like them because they have the leather on the bottom. So they're really durable. They protect your hands well, especially against anything that has thorns. So I highly recommend this kind of glove. The other thing that you're gonna want are some good pruners, especially if you're pruning things like tomatoes or cucumber vines, um, you do have to prune those back. So you wanna have some good pruners and this brand and these particular ones are really easy to use and I like them. The other thing you're gonna want is a way to till your soil. So whether it's a hand tiller, a machine tiller, I just like this little garden rake because as you can see behind me, we have raised beds and they're not huge, they're four by eight. So this works really well to just loosen the soil and kind of mix everything in. So a little garden rake or some kind of tiller is necessary. The other thing you're gonna want is a trowel of some sort. A trowel is just basically like a little baby shovel and it works really well to get down deep in the soil so you can dig little holes for your transplants or whatever you might be digging whatever you might be planting. You're also gonna want some garden markers of some sort so that you can mark what you've planted where so you can keep track because as they're growing, it's not always easy to tell. So these are good. Depending on where you're planting, you probably need a full-size shovel as well to dig holes for things or to dig out your garden in general. And I would also recommend some stakes if you're doing things like tomatoes, cucumbers, beans, they all need to be staked up so that they don't fall down. And also, the one of the most important things probably is some sort of pest spray or pest control. 
My personal opinion is if you're going to use some sort of pest spray, you might as well do it organic because if you're taking the time and effort to grow all your own veggies, they might as well be really clean and safe to eat. So look for some sort of organic pest spray. I'll be honest, I haven't found one that I've been super thrilled with yet, so I'm still on the hunt for that, but I will link a couple down below and it may just be trial and error depending on where you live. The other thing that's really helpful is some sort of organizing container to keep your seed packets in so you can find them year after year and you want to keep it in a place that's cool and dark to extend the life of your seeds. You're going to need to add some sort of compost or amendment to your soil to make it fertile for everything to grow. So a good rule of thumb is two thirds topsoil and about a third compost of some sort and we like to use our own compost we have a horse so we have our own natural compost and that might sound gross but really what we do is we let it sit for about six months and it turns into this beautiful black soil that helps things grow really well and you can probably find a local farmer where you can take some manure off their hands um, you can also use mushroom compost from a garden center as a good option well as you know nothing is going to grow well without water. Even in a humid climate like Tennessee, we still have to water our garden regularly, especially in the summer months when it's really hot. And sometimes we actually have a week or so without rain. So we do have to water our seeds. Now we just make sure the, the garden is totally wet, but it's not sitting in water because that can actually cause damage to your seeds as well. So pay attention to the weather and just kind of check your soil every couple of days. And if it's moist, but not soaking, that's how you want it to be. I think it's really important that you keep a garden journal. This might sound kind of funny, but really what this does is it helps you kind of keep track of everything. And like you can see, I didn't use anything fancy, just this notebook. I did link one um, below that I really like on Amazon because it's a little bit more organized and structured than just a notebook. But in here, I've written down what I planted, where I planted it, and when. And I also kept track of things like when it started producing or growing, what pest issues we've had and so forth. And it just really helps you keep track of things so that you can know what works well, what didn't, and kind of learn from your mistakes as you go. So I highly recommend keeping a garden journal. One of the hardest things as a new gardener is to be patient, but you do have to be patient. Sometimes it takes a while and this is all an experiment. So some things might not work out this year, but don't be discouraged because you can always try again and you might just need to try a different variety of what you're planting or in a different spot, but be patient, it'll happen.